Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Today I'm going to answer some questions that I get all the time about the Merlins, okay? Um, and uh, one I get a lot is uh, how to take care of my Merlin and, uh, you know, get new strings and things of that nature. So I thought I'd start with the G model because it is a little more difficult. Um, and I say difficult only because of the strings, okay? So as you can see, the G model has really big strings. It's got three wound strings and one unwound steel string. Okay, so uh, that's four different size strings. So here is what you can do. You, uh, they don't make a Merlin set of strings for this, unfortunately, nor do they make a set of strings seagull I'm talking about. They don't make a set of strings that's for the D model which is all um, all steel strings and one wound string at the top but if you get any uh, regular set of dulcimer mountain dulcimer strings um, those will go on your D model Merlin okay and uh, I'll, I'll list the uh, I'll list the string sizes right here for you but the G model you have to actually go and um, I use um, I'll put the name right here because I can't remember I think it's string warehouse or something I'll put the name down here but you have to go and order them piecemeal one by one the strings that'll fit this but I'm gonna tell you what they are right here okay so the only one on here that is unwound is a size 10 high carbon steel okay now the next one which is also down at the bottom but it's wound okay it's that very bottom string so you put the wound string on the bottom and the regular steel string the wound phosphor bronze on the bottom and then the 10 up here but that other bottom one is a 23 see how it says phosphor bronze and that one goes on the very bottom and then the 10 goes next then this middle string we have here is another phosphor bronze wound string size 34 and this big fatty up here that gives us that good sound there uh whoops i got it flipped around okay is another phosphor bronze size 47. so i'm not affiliated with any of these companies or anything but i'll leave you a link below where you can go and pick these out and get your new strings because you're going to need new strings and uh, i know a lot of people are beginners and they haven't played before and that can be a headache for them because it is kind of hard to find and I had to uh, look it up because it doesn't even tell you on the material that Seagull sends you, which Seagull, come on, tell people what size replacement strings they need, okay? That just, okay, common sense. So, uh, so yes, get yourself some extra strings because you're going to need them, okay? Now, when I, uh... When I play the G model, I use, because the strings are so much fatter, I use anywhere from a, this is a .73. It's a thicker pick. I use that all the way up to a 1.0, okay? And then on the D model, I use a much thinner pick. This one is a .6, wow, a .6. 6.0 maybe it's hard for me to see that but because the strings are fatter because the strings are fatter you'll uh, you'll be able to pick it faster if you have a thicker pick um, so consider that uh, they cost very little so get in get into a music shop or order online just a whole bunch of different sizes to try out because um, also it's uh, 
Let's see, I'll pick it with the... That's that thicker one. Here's a thinner one. Seems like I've got a lot more pick clacking noise out of this thinner one. But um, I also get the ones that are um, that have the little grippy to sort of help you hold on to them, okay? This one's a Dunlop Max Grip. Uh, I recommend, especially if you haven't done this before, if you haven't played an instrument before, picks are kind of hard to hold on to, and they tend to spin also. Um, and that little, that little grip will help you. Okay, so we got our strings covered, right? Um, and the, the D model has smaller strings. And, uh, you know, again, it's just a standard set of Appalachian dulcimer strings. And I'll list them down there for you. Another thing that beginners often forget is that whenever, whenever you pick up an instrument, I don't care what instrument, if it's a stringed instrument, obviously if it's a wood instrument, you're not going to do this. But if it's a stringed instrument of any kind, you need to tune it a lot, okay? Every time you're about to play it, and you know, I'll hear, I'll hear things like, well, I just tuned it up before I left the house, or I just tuned it up a half hour ago, whatever. Check your tuning. Humidity, uh, weather, you know, just so many different things can affect your tuning, okay? So just take that two seconds and check your tuning. Okay, here's the light pick on the D model. The heavier pick. Um, it sounds like you're getting some pick noise out of the heavier one this time. It's just the gauge of the strings, so. Okay. Now, another question that I want to address that I get all the time is it's not whether I need to get the spruce or the mahogany. It is whether I need to get the G or the D. Which one should I get? I get that question a lot, okay? And um, really, I can't answer that for you, but I can help you a little bit, okay? So your tablatures that you're going to find out there for the Merlin... Um, are written in DAD, and that's your D model, right? Your DAD. Um, that's the way it comes, and that's what a lot of tabs are written for, for the dulcimer. Um, and it's set up for this. However, the G is just a lower, <laughs> it's just lower. It's G, D, G. Well, the fingering is exactly the same, okay? It's like, you know, um, so any tab you find that says DAD, you can use it. Um, I've only found, like, one that didn't quite sound right. Um, but most of, you know, most all of your tabs are going to work with it. Um, all my tabs will work with it that I create. And uh, so really, it's just going to be a preference thing for you. Um, I can give you some, this is in the key of D, okay? So if you want to play it with a guitar or a banjo or a fiddle or anything like that, you're going to have to be playing chords and notes in the keys that are good for the banjo and the, and the guitar and all those other things. And it might make it a little tougher for you to use this. It doesn't mean you can't use it. Um, but it might make it a little tougher for you. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. The G, however, is in open G, just like a banjo. Okay, and it's just already you can play, you can mirror the chords that a banjo is playing, and you'll be in the same key they are. Okay, uh, with a guitar. This goes better with a guitar, too. Um, it doesn't mean you can't play either one with a guitar or banjo. It just makes it a little easier. You can use the same chords that the banjo's using here. You can't hear. You'll have to use different chords, okay? Um, another thing in making your decision, uh, if you are a beginner who has never touched a stringed instrument, these fatter strings on the G 
are going to be a little tougher for you with your fingers until you get good calluses on your fingers. Okay, so <clears throat> that could be something you want to consider. Uh, these little smaller strings are easier to press down. They're not as fat. Easier to press down. Um, so it might be a little easier. But overall, for me, it's about the sound, okay? Why do I have both? Because I love the sound of both, okay? I don't want to give up either one. I like them both. I want to play both of them. I do all the time, and they're fun, all right? These things are 129 bucks. Okay, they're like one of the cheapest stringed instruments you can get. That's a quality instrument. Um, and the volume they put out is unreal, okay? Um, I've got a link below to my Amazon uh, store for these. Uh, if, you, if you buy one through my Amazon store, you're helping out the channel. You're not paying a dime more than you would anyway. Um, I think I get about $2 when you buy. I think it's about $2 if you buy one of these in my store. Um, but anyway, uh, get both of them if you can, because they're so fun. <laughs> they're just way fun. Um, I wanted them to be drastically different is why I went with the mahogany here and the spruce here. I could have got mahogany here, um, but I wanted them to be as different as I possibly could because um, I like all different kinds of sounds. So when choosing, again, it's going to be up to you, you know, the sound. The sound is obviously higher on this one and more mellow on this one, on the G. But they're all so fun to play, you guys. I love these little things. And another thing, you know, um, I wish I would have got the case. I didn't get a case for these, but... Um, it is just a solid little thing. It's really going to take a lot to damage this. So, and it weighs nothing, which I love. You can chuck it in your car and just go. Um, an essential item is a strap. You don't have to get their strap. But get some kind of a strap because, man, this thing, like I said, it weighs nothing. And uh, I love to walk around and play. I love walk around and play so anyway um, the um, the fretboard on both of these is just a solid piece of maple um, so you can you can easily, anytime you change the strings, just wipe it down and clean it off. You can use something, um, let me show you this. You can use a fretboard conditioner slash cleaner. Um, one I like, and I'll be, um, I'll be doing a review on this eventually, is this one right here. Let's see if you can, yeah, there we go. I like this one. Uh, Music Nomad Equipment Care. Cleans, conditions, and protects 100% natural oils, petroleum, and wax free. Okay? So it's safe for any of your fretboard and all that. It'll clean it up. Now, uh, my question for you at this point is just what are you waiting for? All right? These little things are so fun to play. Go out and get yourself one, okay? And while you're at it, get you one of these little tuner deals, all right? I've got links for all this below. It takes you to my Amazon thing. Um, you don't have to buy the one that's on the link. Anywhere you go, you know, shop through Amazon. Uh, but yeah, what are you waiting for? Go get you one. They're so much fun. You'll find that you will, these little things are just addictive. Um, I'm trying to think of what other questions I've had about it. Ma mainly the questions I get are, you know, what do I do for strings? How do I uh, take care of it? Another thing is these tuners are open geared tuners in the back. So they are real easy to adjust. If you've got a loose tuner or something, you've got this little screw right here. They're real easy to adjust. Um, another thing, if, if this comes loose, 
Got another screw right there. Uh, but these are good, good little tuners. Haven't had any problems with them at all. Um, so get yourself one and go now. Go get yourself one. Go, 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 go. Cause you're missing out on a lot of fun. Um, I've got a lot of tabs for them. There's tabs all over the internet for them, and yeah, they're fun. So, with that being said, I only have one more thing to say to you. Well, I got a couple more things to say. Number one, subscribe. Why haven't you already subscribed? Subscribe. Hit like. You know, hit like. <laughs> and the most important thing that I end every video on is always remember that Jesus loves you. Okay? That is extremely important. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye-bye.